Coming up on Cedar Valley Today, three Warburg teams headed to Nationals this weekend. We take a look at how they did. Plus, some Catholics are celebrating the Lenten season with music. And Warburg College raised their most funds ever at Dance Marathon this past weekend. This is Cedar Valley Today. Hello and welcome to Cedar Valley Today, I'm Tyler Metcalf. Lent is a time when Christians focus on their faith. For one group of Cedar Valley citizens, they're doing just that. Music. That's one way some Christians are spreading Christ's message during the Lenten season. The Agnus Day Ministry Group from Waterloo brings together Christians of all ages and communities. Dave Burns, the director and creator, says the idea came from his days at Don Bosco High School. I belonged to a group called Life Unlimited, which had a musical that we took around to the uh, some of the nursing homes and local churches and it was the musical based on the life of Jesus and I was very impressed and very moved by the impact that that had on people. When Burns saw the award-winning singer Tagi perform her own version of it, he decided to tell her about his desire to have a performance following the Passion of Christ. He said, well what's holding you back? And I just, she really encouraged me to start it so it was from there that I took that next step and I put um, what became a musical journey with Christ and Agnus Day ministry, I kind of began to put the music together. Now, seven of the original 15 members are still a part of the group. Through scripture, narration, and music, the group shares their faith with the audience. For Sarah Grumman, she chose to join the group after hearing about it from a friend on her college campus. I didn't expect how big of an impact it would have on us as performers. Burns recommended that anyone come to their performance, even if you are not spiritual or religious. Christian churches of all several different denominations, I mean it's definitely Christian, but we want to break down some of those barriers and realize that, you know, we're many, but yet we're one. Reporting for Cedar Valley Today, I'm Ellen Felton. The group will be holding their sixth and final presentation this Sunday. Anyone interested in attending can go to St. Edward's Catholic Church in Waterloo at 6 o'clock at night. Warburg College held their dance marathon this past weekend. People who participated were all required to raise $100. The event hoped to raise $55,000 this year. During the 12-hour event, the organization announced they raised $55,016.88. In all, the event had 15 different teams that participated. Warper College is celebrating Culture Week. Joining us live now is Alyssa Kozak. That represent all the international students. The week is hosted by the International Club and the International Student Services Office on campus with the theme, Rise and Dance. So, Alyssa, so Alyssa what are some of the events going on this week? Well, Tyler, the week starts off today at 1130 with a faculty panel, including Dr. Brett Billett, Dr. Dan Thomas, and Dr. Brian McQueen talking about the social justice around the world. Tomorrow, they will host a foreign film in the Science Center at 7 p.m. And on Saturday night, the iClub will have a culture show in Newman Auditorium. The show will have a mixture of song, dance, and fun from around the world. Thanks, Alyssa. For more information, you can visit iClub's Facebook page to find more about events for the coming week. Coming up, we take a look at how Warburg Sports did this past weekend. This past weekend, Warburg Sports headed to many national competitions while others began their season. Warburg Wrestling headed to Cedar Rapids this past weekend. The team came back with their 12th national title. The win ties Warburg for the most amount of Division III wrestling national championships with Augsburg. Eight of the wrestlers were named All-Americans. Kenny Martin defended his title in the 149-pound weight class, and four other wrestlers were named runner-ups. The Warburg women's basketball team is going to the NCAA D3 Final Four this weekend. 
They took down the University of Texas Tyler 80-74. Kaylee Cladivo led the charge with 18 points, Miranda Murphy had 16, and Katie Summer had 12. The Knights will take on Tufts University out of Massachusetts. The Final Four round will be played this Saturday in Columbus, Ohio at 4 p.m. Central Time. Warburg women's lacrosse team is looking to have a great season. The team won against Concordia Chicago with a final score of 20 to 5. The Knights set a new single game scoring record. This is only the second year the college has had the program. And Warburg track and field competed at Indoor Nationals this past weekend. The team traveled to Grinnell College for Friday and Saturday's events. The men's distance medley relay team placed fourth, making them the first All-American distance medley team since 2008. The women's 4x400 placed third in their event. When we come back, we'll take a look at what's trending on the social media. Now let's take a look at what's happening on social media. Robots are coming to you and I. The first robotics competition Iowa Regional will take place in the Unidome and the McLeod Center. They will be there Thursday, March 24th through Saturday, March 26th. High school students from the United States, China, and Brazil will showcase their hard work after six weeks of designing and building an original robot. The University of Wisconsin Platteville went into lockdown yesterday. A student reported seeing a gun in the restroom around the 1 o'clock in the afternoon. The student pulled the fire alarm and academic buildings went into lockdown. Classes for the rest of the day were canceled. No shots were fired, but police are still looking for the suspect. Classes will be resumed today for students. And the Cedar Valley Humane Society is in need of supplies and candy for the St. Patrick's Day Parade that takes place on Thursday, March 17th. They're asking for gift cards or any decorations from a party supply store or Walmart as well as candy. They are open until 7 p.m. tonight and will be putting these donations towards making their float look great to help spread the word about their organization. Now let's take a look at your local weather. What's next for your future? Will it be worth it? Will it lead you on a journey of discovery? To embrace your passions. Unlock your potential. And realize your purpose. With Warburg, you can. And you will, because you are worth it. Warburg, worth it. Schedule your campus visit and learn how Warburg is worth it at warburg.edu slash worth it. Hello from the design team at Gotcha Covered. Whether you are looking for simple window treatments for privacy or light control, or elaborate custom designs to add beauty and value to your home or office, Gotcha Covered has the solution for every window. Call today to schedule a free, no obligation consultation in the convenience of your home or office. We proudly serve the Cedar Valley, and we look forward to taking care of your window treatment needs, regardless of your style or budget. Cedar Valley Today's Kaylin Thompson sat down with Senator Chuck Grassley this past Friday to discuss former GOP hopeful Ben Carson's endorsement of Donald Trump for the open Supreme Court seat and the 2016 presidential election. Let's take a look. Joining us now in Cedar Valley Today is Senator Chuck Grassley. And today I just kind of want to talk about like three main issues. Um, earlier today, uh, former Republican presidential hopeful Ben Carson endorsed Donald Trump and so kind of what were your reactions to that? I think it's kind of a natural because uh, uh, both of them are not uh, political leaders ahead of time. Uh, they were all running as an outsider, kind of anti-establishment and uh, I think that uh, Ben Carson uh, was one of these people that uh, did not get down in the mud and I think that uh, that it will really add to Trump's uh, candidacy 
when he has a person that has the reputation that uh, Carson has uh, for a clean-cut person, uh, uh, well-liked, I think it'll really help Trump. Right, and were you kind of surprised with the endorsement at all? Yeah, I am, because I thought that uh, uh, Ben Carson was going to, when he pulled out, was going to kind of just be a, a good citizen to, uh, to get church people involved in voting more often than they do. Mm -hmm. Definitely, and one of the more kind of pressing <laughs> issues in p the political world, it would be the open Supreme Court justice seat. And so you met with the president a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, what kind of steps do you think should be taken with this? Well, I, there's two different roles. There's one for the Senate, uh, advise and consent uh, to the president's nominee nominees. We can't do anything until the president actually nominates. Mm -hmm. So the, the president uh, starts it off, and in maybe in a couple weeks he will nominate somebody. Uh, but uh, we have, uh, as a Republican majority in the United States Senate, we have uh, decided based upon uh, about 30 years of uh, political statements by people of both political parties that when a president is a lame duck, it ought to go uh, over to the new president uh, to make the selection. And in the meantime, then the people have uh, a voice in the process. Right. And so kind of with people kind of being split with what they think of, you know, electing someone to get more things done or, you know, waiting for that, um, kind of how are you being representative of the Iowa constituency? And do you think it might affect your reelection at all? Or? Well, you, you can't make these decisions based upon how it's going to affect your election. Mm -hmm. You've got to do what's right. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I guess um, just in closing, what are kind of your general thoughts of the 2016 presidential election thus far? It's pretty muddy and unpredictable. In the Democratic Party, everybody would think that Hillary Clinton would be the nominee. But recently, uh, uh, Sanders has had some victories that nobody thought he would have. Right. And even this very day, he's very elated about his possibilities in all 50 states that he still has a chance of winning. And then you've always got this outside thing. Is uh, uh, Hillary going to be prosecuted under uh, these email situations? Right. So that's a big question mark. And then uh, on the Republican side, you know, we start out with 18. We have four left. Uh, and surprises are happening all the time. So I would not feel very comfortable making a prediction who the nominee of either political party is going to be. Grassley also mentioned in the interview that there's been statements from other senators who've said when you're in a situation with a lame duck president, they should not be making the nominations in the heat of the presidential campaign. When we come back, one Wisconsin town is celebrating St. Patrick's Day all week. A Wisconsin town is going Irish this week in honor of St. Patrick's Day. A team of leprechauns arrived in New London Monday to change the town's name to New Dublin. The tradition began more than 30 years ago when several people staged an impromptu parade on St. Patrick's Day. That impromptu parade has turned into the largest parade in Wisconsin. Officials say Saturday's Grand Parade will feature at least 120 entries and, if the weather cooperates, will be attended by as many as 30,000 people. Other activities planned this week include Irish caroling, social gatherings, and corned beef and cabbage dinners. These were your top three stories from today. Agnus Day Ministry is holding their final presentation following the Passion of Christ on Sunday. Warburg Women's Basketball is headed to the Final Four at Nationals on Saturday. Chuck Grassley joined us in studios to talk Donald Trump, the open Supreme Court seat, and the 2016 presidential election. Thanks for watching us here on Cedar Valley Today. Be sure to like our Facebook page and download our Cedar Valley Today app on your Google Play and iTunes Store. Make sure to have a great day, Cedar Valley.